Hello everyone. Once again, this is Dare to Speak. I really hope you guys like that video that I did on my interview with the a former old school Spanish Cobra, Luis Pesado. The interview was about half an hour long, so I hope you actually enjoyed it. It was very informative. And like I said before, I was trying to get a interview with him for, for the longest now. And I really liked his message on how he gave a lot of info and a lot of education on, on what it was like for him. And the, and the right decision that he made of getting out of the gang when his son was born. For those of you who haven't seen that uh, video yet on, on the interview, I, I strongly advise you watch it. I was also going to um, mention that he talked about the history of the Medina brothers in which in 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 this city in, in, in the south side of in the south side of Milwaukee or where I used to live on on, 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 the, on the south side in, in the in the hood there was um the Medina brothers um and and the, most of the family moved over here to uh from Chicago all the way to oh, all the way here to uh to Milwaukee in which they started the Milwaukee chapter of the Spanish Cobras in the late seventies. And I mentioned this before, so I um wanted to also say that I found out some years ago that my cousin, the one who actually uh got angry at one of the Medina brothers, which was Willie Medina, when he uh, attacked some kid that was just walking past him. And um, because, of, because of the fact that he made eye contact with him while he was talking to her and, and her brothers. And he just, uh, from the reputation of what he has, he's like a you know, quick-tempered, you know, crazy guy or whatever like that, that kind of thing. And how he just attacked him and slammed up against the glass window of the store and he just put his forearm against his throat saying, what the fuck are you looking at? And she, she got really pissed off and she, and then she grabbed Willie Medina and then slapped him against the glass window doing the same thing. Saying, how do you like it? How do you like it, motherfucker? You think you're badass? You know, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I mean, that kid didn't do anything to you. What the fuck's wrong with you? Well, he was looking at me when he was passing by, like like, like there was something wrong with me or some shit. Well, you were looking at him the same way. So what the fuck do you expect? You know, she was talking about how stupid his, his reason was. I mean, if someone just passes by and makes eye contact with you, eye contact with you, and looks at you strangely just because you did the same thing, I mean, come on, just let that shit slide. That's it's, it's stupid. Anyways, I uh, I wanted to mention that my cousins pretty much knew the Medina brothers. Both Jamie and and uh, William Medina. They never knew Richard, which was King Cobra from from Chicago. They never met him, but um, there was a lot of horror stories that I um, that I heard about these guys, about how crazy they are and the lengths that they go to uh, 
to intimidate people and how they were feared a lot by a lot of people in, in the neighborhood. And there was also a couple of other people too that were also very crazy and and things like that. I remember in the late 70s and early 80s because I was like maybe seven and then eight years old. 1978, 1979, 1980. There was a lot of overwhelming, and I mean overwhelming, loathing, hate towards these, towards this gang during that time. And this was before the Latin Kings even um, emerged. Well, they, that, was, that was before they even started. Um, I don't remember how big they were in numbers, but I, uh, from what I understand, there were a lot of them, a huge group of them. Could have been about twenty or twenty five or 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 something like that. I don't know. But my cousins knew the Medina brothers and, and the rest of the Spanish Cobras and they would hang out um a lot in um in front of their house and they were trying to initiate my cousins into the gang. They hesitated about it, and they were somewhat, you could say, somewhat affiliated with them because they were friends with them, and they did at one point represented represented them, you know, um, that kind of thing. Because they were friends, they were they were friends with them, so they knew them well. But they never really, uh, I don't know if you want to call it affiliates, because they they, they didn't really. Um, support, you know, all the stupid things that they were doing. They were just friends with them, you know, that's that kind of thing. And I guess for whatever reason, they um, represented them for that kind of thing. I don't know. And my uh, other cousin, she, uh, she couldn't stand them. She couldn't stand both Jamie and Willie. And she always told them to, like, stay the fuck away from my brothers. Get the fuck out of here. She said, you fucking stupid-ass Spanish Cobra faggots. Get the fuck out of here. Because she, she just didn't trust them. The, she was worried that they would get them in, into uh, trouble. Or to like, you know, they all hang out with them and they might do something, they might do something stupid that would cause them to either get arrested or whatever that case may be. She just did not trust them. So she left it to the point where um, she felt that she had to go off on them. And just tell them, I mean, she, she was brave. I give my cousin for points for bravery. And from what I understand, and from what I understand, she could fight. <laughs> but it's very important to know that when you don't feel comfortable with certain people, and you feel you need to protect your your siblings, I can understand that. And um, there was a situation where. Um, I don't know, some crime or something happened. I don't, I don't re quite remember. But she told me that um, the Medina brothers um, one time retaliated against um, one, one of her brothers, one of my, my, one of my cousins, that he snitched um, or he mentioned something about something that, something that they did. So out of revenge, as a, and as a warning, because of the fact that they were friends with them, and otherwise they would have jumped them or did something to them, who knows. But they retaliated by um, shooting up his car. They took out revolvers or whatever, and they shot the windows, and they messed up his car, and then... I don't know if, if they... Um, 
put a note on it or something like that or whatever. And I don't quite remember what the message was exactly, but it was something like, we don't take it likely to, or, or, or uh, no one's going to be listening to no snitches. Or this is you get, or you, this is what you get for being a snitch, or something like that, or some kind of warning. In, I, I don't, I don't remember the exact words, but this, this was something that they were, you know. I mean, these guys were just fucking crazy, and it was really bad. I wish, because I mentioned this in one video before already. I wish I would have showed you the um, newspaper clip of a, of a Spanish cobra that actually murdered an old man. He actually killed an old man, beat him to death, or, or I think he beat him to death. I don't know if he stabbed him or whatever. I don't remember. But I know that he uh, it was um, first degree substantial battery and murder. Or whatever. And I remember where he actually, um, when he was arrested, they, they had him on the, on the mugshot and stuff like that. And he had no fucking remorse. He was, it was a Puerto Rican guy. He had a big afro. His, you know, his afro was very big. Um, because I was, this was in 1980. So, the, the the big Afro styles for, for a lot of the Hispanics were, um, was like pretty much his style, you know, the 70s kind of style. And he was a skinny type of a well-built kind of guy. And then as he was posing for the mugshot, you know, you know some people just are like this or whatever. He had no remorse. But he had the audacity, you know, to put, to add insult to injury by, um, you know, doing the, you know, going like this, doing the Spanish Cobra sign, whatever like that. I forgot which hand he used it, but he was, he was going, he was doing that. And they took a picture of him doing that stuff, doing that thing. And the look on his face was like, like I said before, he did not fucking give a fuck. And I, from what I understand, the reason why he, he killed him to begin with was um, there was some sort of a dispute or argument or, or I, I don't, I don't quite remember. I don't, I don't remember. I know that, I know that re the reason why he killed him was stupid. And I know that it was, a, it was a senseless murder. And as time went on, because most, most of the time during that, during that time, there was a lot of, uh. There was some Spanish Cobras that ended up going to uh, to prison for 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 serious crimes, and that's why the gang the gang got smaller and smaller. And even though they were still dangerous, and and there was a lot a great deal of loathing in with within the the neighborhood, a lot of a lot of people hated them, and I mean hated them because they they. Uh, they were very dangerous and they caused a lot of trouble. And that's when uh, later on the Latin Kings emerged from when one Latin King came by from uh, Chicago and he actually um, initiated and gave the blessing to uh, three guys that, that, um, that started the, the Latin King chapter. And, and then a couple of years later, that's so when they got really large in numbers because they were recruiting as, as much as possible. And that's what led to the uh, the rumble in Walker Square Park in which they fought for uh, territory and also because of, uh, of a girl that they, that they knew 
she knew uh, a lot of guys. He, she knew a lot of guys from both sides as friends. And they were friends with her, and an aunt, and uh, a tragic um, death happened, in which they blamed each other for it. And I think she got shot or something during, I don't know, something like that. And at her funeral, they, they showed up to pay her to pay respects to her. Um, the Spanish Krobas were on one side wearing their colors with the black and green. And the, and the Latin Kings were on the other side uh, um, with their colors of the black and yellow. And they were at her funeral. They paid their respects and then they wanted to settle settle this thing one, once and for all. And they decided to um, to have a rumble. Whoever wins, state uh, wins the territory, and and they keep it. And the Spanish Corbas, when they fought them, they were outnumbered. That was the reason why they lost. And like I said before, because of a lot of some of them went to went to prison. And from what I understood, uh, there was also a, a couple of them that betrayed their own gang they and they and they sold out in the in the um a few spanish corpus became latin kings they just decided to switch sides for whatever the reason and that's what led to it and that's how the latin kings won and luis Pas uh, luis pasado pretty much made it clear about what territory was considered um spanish corpus it's like 8th and Madison to Lapham or to Mitchell Street. And, you know, there was, there was a, like 7th and, or 8th and Greenfield. That's why a lot, there was a lot of Latin Kings in, in, uh, from 10th Street, 11th Street, you know, from, from National all the way to Mitchell Street, you know, all the way up up into twentieth and in 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 those streets and stuff like that. They pretty much had a lot of uh territory taken out, especially where with the territory the territory where the uh Spanish Cobras used to used to hang out and and um where the, and where they had their graffiti. I remember when I first saw the the Spanish Cobra graffiti um, a couple of years, some years later, like in 1984, 85, it was taken down or how they do their spray painting, how they cross it out, and then they put Latin Kings. What used to be Spanish Cobras, you know, with the Cobra sign, the Cobra symbol and the staff and the diamond, the S and C, the three dots, that was um, sprayed over and they put the logo and the, the graffiti of the... Uh, of the Latin Kings, it would put the crown, the five point crown, and then an L on one side and then K. And I remember this, and I remember this as clear as yesterday, how, how they did it and being like 10, I'm sorry, not 10, like 11, 12 years old, when, and then seeing, seeing the graffiti. And everything else was pretty much marked off and replaced with the Latin King graffiti. And that was during the time when break dancing music was was going into style and Run DMC, you know, LL Cool J and and you know all these real famous um, um, music that was coming out during that time, and people were doing a lot of break dancing, putting cardboard and on, 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 on the cement, doing their back spins, you know. The worm and and all this and all this other crazy stuff, and me witnessing all this kind of stuff and being fascinated by it, you know, as a kid at that time. So it was during all that time. So again, um, that's basically my story and the whole thing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Questions or comments, you know what to do. And this is Dare to Speak. And to all of you,
take care.